to the How Very Human Sciences. It's a new podcast here for the College of Human Sciences at Auburn University. We really encourage you to take the time to listen. We plan to feature alumni and industry leaders who will not only share their inspiring stories, but also offer guidance and advice to the college students of today. So our first guest, our inaugural guest, only get to say that one time, Catherine, uh, is a graduate of the Hospitality Management Program in Human Sciences. She's also being honored as the Alumni of the Year at this year's Hospitality Gala. So Catherine Wayman, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Let me start here. So I, I feel like you and your mom, Kathy, another Auburn graduate, uh, y'all are a dynamic design duo, as I read more and more about the two of you. Um, your company, C. Wayman Floral and Events, you're constantly making headlines uh, in Vogue, in L, Southern Bride, Southern Living, just to name a few, all for your cutting-edge floral designs and events. Let's start here. What would you credit your success to? Um, I'm very, very <laughs> blessed to have a really great support system. And so I think I have been in a unique situation where I had my mother, who is already in the industry, Mm -hmm. um, being successful in her own right. Um, And honestly, when I was here at Auburn, that meant there was no way I was going to do that. Like, I'm going to prove myself. I'm going to do something else. (laughs) Like, I'm not riding on anybody's coattails. But then I've learned, you know, like, there are people there in your lives for a reason. Mm -hmm. And there are gifts that you're given for a reason. And because, so once I decided to put all my other experiences together and join forces really with my mother, that's when things just really took off Mm -hmm. because then it was both of our talents, both of our brains together. And honestly, just to have someone there with you through the highs and the lows, there's no one better than having your mama. Oh, absolutely. You you said that so well, for sure. And you know, so let's break it down to where it really started. You're here as a student, and correct me if I'm wrong, and your mom, Kathy, does a couple of events for a couple of colleges on campus, and her work is just so good, the demand gets very high, and is that when she said, Catherine, come in here and join me? Well, there was a bit of a time in between then. Okay. Um, so my parents moved here to Auburn when I was in school and my sister was in school. So I grew up in Marietta, um, north of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And so when she came here, she was mostly doing weddings and, like you said, like smaller events with Auburn. Um, And then she got got connected with the Office of the President and was doing things with them. Um, But I was still, and this was sort of on the tail end of me being um, like a junior, senior. Mm -hmm. And so after that, I immediately moved out to California and did a lot in the hotel industry and events and things like that. So she was growing the business, working here in Auburn while I was spreading my wings and um, just didn't realize those wings were going to fly back to the nest (laughs) later on. So there was a gap in between then. Okay. um, For sure. So by the time... um, can't remember when was it when we I decided to come back and we rebranded the company to be C. Wayman which is handy that she didn't know I mean we have the same name so it works for both of us um and so at that time I the Auburn events were getting larger which was lovely and so that could you know help keep my base and my foundation and then I started and I'm still Atlanta based and so that, and I, so I started reaching out in Atlanta and doing other things. And then even from there, it has grown. Right. And, and so. now, Catherine, you're doing jobs for big time film directors and hip hop stars like Cardi B. Uh, so you're still doing a lot here at Auburn. You're in and out of town a whole lot. You're here now for Bruce Pearl events, something with A Day, uh, helping with an event at the president's mansion as well. So tell us how you stepped into these high end events. Is it all due to social media? And, of course, your outstanding work. But that had to be pretty amazing when these different projects started coming in. Yes, absolutely. I really sort of look back and I'm like, how did this happen? Um, I thought Auburn or, you know, all the events that we were doing here was probably big, big time. All You know, I was paying my bills doing flowers, doing something that I love. So I thought that was just the best thing ever. 
And I really didn't have um, intentions to try to break into another field. Um, I was very content. Um, But I think what I've learned is, like you said, like we were putting out good work and I take a lot of pride in my work Mm -hmm. and I put my heart and soul into it. And so um, people started seeing that. And I, I had one planner reach out to me from Instagram, she just found me on Instagram, asked me to do a free photo shoot. And so I think that was, you know, what sort of turned, I didn't know who she was. I looked her up and I was like, well, this looks legit. (laughs) And so I did that sort of leap of faith where I was like, okay, doing a free thing, it costs you money, it costs flowers, it costs time. And so my mom and I went to Barnsley Gardens we paid for the flowers. We did it. We worked our butts <laughs> off. We did it something beautiful. And then she's the one that booked me for, started booking me for the Real Housewives of Atlanta, doing a lot of their events. Mm-hmm. And then it just sort of started s- snowballing from there because while I was at the Real Housewives of Atlanta event, a director stood next to me, was standing there, and he was like, these flowers are dope. And I <laughs> just was like, hey, I did yeah. these. And, like, literally, like, the next month, mm-hmm. I was his art director for a Missy Elliott video. Wow. So he – what I've been told is how and, – and it sort of has evolved – is because I do take pride in what I'm doing no matter what I – like, mm-hmm. no matter what the field or if it's flowers or design or interiors – or just, you know, um, just a sort of overall customer service, I think that if you're, you're willing to hustle, you're willing to keep your head down, you're willing to um, actually do what you say and follow through, and that's mm-hmm. when the doors are going to open. Yeah. Hey, just give us an idea of the wide range of events you're doing these days. You know, because people think about, okay, a nice dinner, an awards uh, ceremony, but really take us out there to some of the different things you're doing now. So for the events wise, um, I still do weddings. Thankfully, I have gotten to the world where I can do fewer weddings or fewer events at a higher minimum because I just was killing myself. Um, and now the event scale are so super large that I have to have, like, basically an army. But within a matter of probably, like, five years, my minimums for events went from, like, $2,000 to I'm minimums. Now my average floral events just for flowers are around $100,000 just for the flowers. Mm -hmm. So um, it's sort of wild in a way. Um, that there's some extra zeros that I never would have ever dreamt of. Um, but because now that I'm in that level, I'm having the ability to do some really fun things. Like last week was one of the first Indian weddings I ever did. And I've always loved them and dreamt of them because it's like multiple days events. Mm -hmm. And I remember doing like one baby shower, Indian baby shower when I lived in Birmingham and I thought, wow, like I can't believe what all they do. And so now they saw me do build these trees for a set, and then they wanted it for their event. So I have it sort of goes back and forth about that. And then I did an event just the other day for Netflix for Narcos Mexico Mm -hmm. um, in L.A. Mm. And so, and that wasn't... A huge event, but it was fabulous. It was at the recording studio that um, John Lennon was at and Carol King and um, Bruce Springsteen and it's like all these things. And so I've, it's been – all of this has taken me to a lot of fun places that I never yeah. would have thought. Um, and then people just want flowers in weird, crazy places. So <laughs> – or just design in weird, crazy places. And I think because – I do think outside the box. I think because I was raised by a florist, there's a point where I'm bored of flowers and a vase and a hydrangea and a rose. 
So I always try to think of different ways and different textures to do things. And so that probably now you have seen or my clients have seen that um, different car dealerships or different people like that will call me and for their events. And so I've done, I've worked for Porsche and I've done flowers spilling out of their cars and like suspended in the air. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so a lot for marketing and I don't know. I but sort of feel like I'm talking in circles. But that's, that's okay. The way it's exciting. The business all of a sudden has become that you don't think it's connected, but it truly is connected. Well, I loved listening to you talk to our hospitality management students of today. Uh, just recently, you dropped in to do that, and and a, several things stood out to me. But you you told them as these different jobs rolled in, uh, you in, encourage them be humble and say, hey, I want to learn this. And you're very honest with your clients. And and you'll say, I haven't done this, but I'm going to figure it out. And, and you just keep learning new ways to, to do floral designs and events. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've definitely learned that you've got to be inventive and keep learning and growing. And I have gotten calls where I think, thankfully, this is a call because I am, my face is probably in total panic mode or I'm pacing around um, and you're just doing the smile and nod thing. Um, and there is something to fake it till you make it. However, and this is what I was trying to express to the students, you have to have the will to teach yourself, to learn, to be in the trenches, to go through some hard work and some hard times for that quote unquote fake. It's really not fake. It's learn it till you make it. Mm -hmm. And so I have been very honest, like when that director approached me and it went from an event to gluing flowers on a model to then being his art director at with a very prominent artist. And I said, you know what? I've never done this before. But he said, Catherine, you have done everything you've done so far. You're one of the only people that has come in the door and actually done what you said you would do. And he said, I know that if you can make things beautiful in person, you can make things beautiful on screen. And so I think that builds credibility with your clients. And it also, um, but it's also hard. Like if I didn't want to, I wouldn't be where I am today and have such a broad range of clients and business and things like that if I wasn't willing to learn um, and continue right. to do that. You know, and some people have that eye for design, and, and that's their main strength. Uh, you have this whole hospitality management background, uh, what you studied here at Auburn, mm -hmm. and then what you talk about customer service, you see the whole event. Um, and you mentioned that design comes naturally for you, but all that other stuff the financial, leading a team, you do have to do that too with your own company. Mm -hmm. Was that hard working it, into that? It definitely is hard because, mm -hmm. and I think, again, there are things that you're going to be naturally good at, but you're not going to succeed if you work on the things that don't come as naturally with you. You have to be very well-rounded. And so, um, thankfully, I'm very, very thankful, and I truly think about this a lot, whether you guys called me or not for the alumni of the year or, you know, for this podcast, I really do think about some of the things that I was taught in class. And I was um, recruited one time by a sales training company and it had nothing to do with events, nothing to do with hotels that I started in, nothing to do with weddings, design, anything. And they said, we believe you could do this job, this position, be an operations manager because you have this skill set of hospitality and customer service. And because you can do that, we can teach you the other things. But there are some things that are, like, ingrained in you and the experiences you've had dealing with, with the customers and clients and unhappy people and problem resolution that they're like, this is so infinitely valuable to us that we would rather bring someone in, teach them the sales type of stuff or what we need you to do because we can't teach someone how to do that. And that truly was the things that I learned here in school in our customer service classes and things like that. And so, yes, now I do know that I'm a valuable designer. 
I have experience in event planning. Um, I've experienced in art directing, a lot of different things. But I think that the reason why I'm getting the calls is because at the core of it, I am giving people that customer service. And that's what I learned here in the trenches, in the hotel here across yes. the street. And sometimes in the trenches and as a student, you have that class, you're thinking, I'm not interested in this at all. Maybe it was finance and numbers. Oh, and yeah. Now. I, do you see how I skipped over that? I <laughs> yeah. still, I wish we had like, so the way the program was back in the day, 15 years ago, oh, when I was here, <laughs> it was hotel restaurant management. And so and we had a minor in business. And so anytime I had to walk into the business classes, I was like, I don't need this. I'm going to be a plan- party planner. I'm going to do this. But I can tell you I've been in an Excel spreadsheet this morning, and I will be in an Excel spreadsheet tonight. And <laughs> you can't make money if you don't know how to, you know, how to handle work it. And yes. handle it. No, I remember what a p and I don't need to know what that is. Um, so, yes. I think maybe I slept through a lot of those classes and maybe I should come back. Maybe, you know, <laughs> it came in subliminally, <laughs> you know, it was there. Um, yes. So. Talk about contacts and networking, because I've talked to a lot of college students of today and, and my daughter's one of those. She's now a senior, but at one point when she was a freshman or a sophomore, I said, well, why don't you call so-and-so because they know so-and-so. And the first reaction was, no, I want to do this myself and try to explain the importance of networking. And when someone's willing to help you, say thank you, right? Open a door. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I had initially just gone and joined forces with my mother earlier. Um, And I think that's double-edged sword in a way of, like, I wasn't willing to take that help or I wanted to you know, prove myself, and I think that's what a lot of college students or younger people want to do, but um, again, it's, it's, it's hard out there. It's, um, my very first job um, was as a corporate management training program at the High, Highlands Inn in Carmel, California. Mm-hmm. It's quite beautiful. Not a bad place to start out. And it <laughs> surely wasn't, indeed, um, and I got that um, connection through my uncle who had worked for Hyatt for years. And I remember getting there and being like a little embarrassed or thinking, I hope people think that I earned this. Like I do have a degree in hospitality and I did this. And I came from a great school and I had good grades and I worked in the hotel the whole time in school. But there was that feeling like that little bit of imposter syndrome a bit. But you know what? Once you walk in the door, no one cares. And you're going to prove yourself one way or the other. It doesn't matter who gave you that handshake, who told you to call this person. That does get you in the door to to get the place, but you would not be hired if you did not have the credibility, the the you know the personality, the all the different things, the education that would be behind that. And so the minute that that was really. I learned that of like, you know what? No, I've, you've got to earn your own stripes. So do not be afraid of networking. And in fact, it will help you. Um, networking, I think, as well, is like listening to people and their experiences and how you can also learn from them and maybe possibly then, you know, don't keep replicating all these different mistakes because you wanted to do it on your own so it's not necessarily taking a job from someone or getting a call it's like listening to how they how their careers developed the things that were important to them the things that they listen to when they hire um yes not working is pretty huge yeah right you know let's talk about covid uh yes that whole thing (laughs) that whole thing you know of being an event planner uh, a designer what did you learn through that time, and how does it affect how you run your business today? We're not, I act like it's all done. It's not, but the, the heat of it, the heart of it, what did you learn through well, it all? I surely hope. I know, I hope so. <laughs> um, I can tell you it was very, very hard on me. Um, mm-hmm. I felt like I had finally gotten to a point where I felt secure, 
and felt like I was doing the right thing and in the right places. Um, and it was really, really tough because events were the f- very first thing that were canceled and they were the f- very last thing to come back. And especially when I'd worked very hard to get to a place where I talked about like having minimums or not doing very small events. Well, my 500 500 person event that we were doing at Mercedes Benz Stadium for the Falcons, of course, that's not going to happen. And so all of a sudden I went from, I'm great, I'm like tough, I'm <laughs> I'm the best, I'm so successful, to like, oh, help me. Can I pay my <laughs> studio rent? Can right. I uh, pay my workers? Mm-hmm. Can I pay myself? Um, and that's just a whole other thing is just being a small business owner. Again, pay attention in your business classes, my dears. Um, but it was humbling. And, but it also, thankfully, through the years, I've had already taught myself the skill set of, all right, that didn't work. Let's try something else. And because I already had the attitude, and this is something I can say now looking back. I can tell you I had many, many tears over this. Um, But now looking back, I think because I am willing to learn, I am willing to pivot, that that allowed me to get through those times. Because you know what? There are things out of your control in life. No one really expected a a worldwide pandemic. But you know what? You've got to be able to pivot. You've got to be able to provide for yourself. You've got to be able to provide for your clients. And you've got to come up with solutions. And that comes back to problem resolution that we talked about a lot in school here. Um, And so um, it was tough, but I learned a lot about myself. And then also, um, and just, I also, a lot during that time, I started doing a lot more networking. And I started actually decorating some podcasting studios Mm -hmm. For a client who I had done her book cover, I worked with Michelle Williams, and I, she said, okay, I'm doing a podcasting studio, so then I went and decorated her pot, her space, and then I ended up decorating her house, and then I ended up doing flowers for her family, you know, and so those are the things where you're building relationships, and you're figuring it out, and then it's come back to, like, she called me the other day to do something, and I was like, oh, I'm too busy. And I'm like, I cannot believe I just told Michelle Williams that I'm too busy. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean. Well, and it's good you were able to say those words. Because I know you shared, too, that we all have a little bit of uh, maybe PTSD with the pandemic and thinking, let me do more, more, more in case something hits me like that again. And you've had to learn, maybe I do need to say no to some things. Well, I think all... I'm still struggling with that. I mean, the fact that I'm driving back and forth from Atlanta to Auburn today, and then I'm going to get on a flight to LA the next day. And so I do still have issues with saying no and boundaries um, because it's not like I'm on salary. It's not like I'm a huge company, even though I'm doing huge, fabulous things. And I do value that, but huge valuable or huge things cost a lot of money. Um, It costs a lot of resources, demands a lot of resources. Um, And so, yes, I'm trying to actually learn about saying a little bit more no to to different things. Um, But I also, I just, the biggest takeaway is don't take it for granted. Have, you know, every single thing, whether big or small, I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for these clients. I'm thankful for the people that still called me. You know, even when we were just trying to figure things out. Um, and that's when your community and your support system is really important. So I will be hopefully ready if something like that happens again. Um, thankfully, things I'm able to get a little bit more selective right now. Um, and I think it's something about me learning a little bit more about balance. Um, I've actually thought about this a lot. When... We were in the class. The first question a student asked me was like, what is your work-life balance? And I nearly just like started laughing or crying or something because I'm like, hey, when you find figure that out, let me know. Yes. So it's something that I'll always be struggling with. 
But something that I heard recently and I think is is valuable and just there are different seasons in your life. And when I look back at how things have progressed, there has been a season where I had to step away from the hotel life and the world because it was it was really hard um, being nonstop, that fast-paced environment. I was a night op- resort manager. I had no social life. It was really tough. And then I went from that to having more of a desk job or office job. And so, um, and then there's been times where I do think that with my business now, um, it's about balancing, all right, right now I'm going to work really hard in growing and scaling my company because that will later on balance out with when able, whenever I'm going to be able to have a great team working for me or I'm going to guess a little bit of coasting. So it's not necessarily the balancing of day to day, but it's a balancing about like when you're doing things, when you're accepting things and sort of the overall picture about the balance of life that I'm you know, trying to work through. Believe me, the search for balance is lifelong. <laughs> it really is. So I think you're on track to find that too. But before we let you go, Catherine, because we could sit here all day. Um, some of the students, when they knew you were going to be coming on, they said, be sure to ask a favorite memory of your time as a student at Auburn University and a favorite place where you like to hang out when you were here. I can tell you where it wasn't. I just parked in the <laughs> the library, and I just, like, there was something about, I was, like, Your blood pressure feeling, spiked. Yeah, there was, like, a feeling of, like, oh, my gosh, there's a final. Like, I still wake up. I'm 37 now, and I think, I'm late for a final. I'm going to get failed out of Auburn right now. Like, <laughs> yes. Th- so I can tell you where that wasn't. <laughs> it's not going to be. Um, the... I think my favorite memories, and looking back now, it should have told me exactly where I'd end up being, but it was making, back in the day, for Greek seeing, we would do backdrops, and I always built the backdrops, and then I did the floats, and I remember winning the float when Cadillac Williams was in school, and I built a big (laughs) Cadillac, and I had the wheels turning, and we won, and I had so many spirit points. And <laughs> well, it sounds great. I yeah. can see it. I can see it right and now. Just like that. Yeah. So I think those are the favorite things. Um, mm-hmm. Looking back, that was fun for me to do, and hanging out. Um, I don't know, good old Jordan Hare, probably. Oh yeah, y'all, y'all enjoy mm-hmm. it because you know it's different when you're not a student. And it's just so fast, isn't it, your college days? It really is. Well, Catherine Wayman, we are so proud and honored, and uh, we celebrate with you. Thank you for being our first guest here on the How Very Human Sciences podcast. And uh, we can't wait to see you, too, for the Hospitality Gala. Congratulations on all of that. And to those listening, thank you. We'll be with you again soon with another How Very Human Sciences podcast here in the College of Human Sciences. More advice for you on getting out there and changing the world. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, CHS at AU. That's College of Human Sciences at Auburn University, CHS at AU. And until we're together again, take care.